Hello and welcome to Sensei Podcast. This is Manos Brilakis discussing with leaders in the field of CTO and Complex PCI. Sensei means teacher or master in Japanese. The goal of the Sensei Podcast is to help you learn and improve in CTO and Complex PCI so that you can become the best that you can be and offer your patients the best possible results. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sensei Podcast. It is my great pleasure to introduce our guest today, who is Dr. Roberto Diletti from the Thorax Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, uh, one of the you know premier centers in the world where he heads the CTO and Complex Interventional Program. So, Roberto, thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, such a pleasure and an honor to talk to you today. It's a pleasure for me to be with you today. Thank you for the invitation. So, Roberto, tell me a little bit about your career course. How did you become involved in CTO and complex interventions? Was it something you always wanted to do? It came along the way. How did this happen for you? Well, uh, I started my career here at Erasmus uh, Medical Center. Uh, I was first a fellow here. Uh, I did first two years of uh, research fellowship, and then I did two years of clinical fellowship here. And uh, by the end of my clinical fellowship, they proposed me to stay and to start working as a senior interventional cardiologist. Um, obviously, uh, here uh, we have a lot of complex PCI. We, we are lucky because we are a very high volume with a high rate of complex PCI CTO. We, we do it every day. So it was for me natural to be uh, involved in complex PCI and also in CTOs. And also, I must say, I had quite some passion in doing that. Um, it was my favorite moment when you have a very complex case and you need to think about how to solve it, what is the best technique. Uh, that was really my best moment uh, in the cat lab. So I really enjoyed that. And actually, it came from um, my colleagues. So my colleagues, they at a certain point, they told me... Uh, if you like it, uh, and we see that you like it, uh, why don't you focus on complex intervention? Why don't you focus on CTOs? You are probably the most uh, suitable person in our group to do that. So actually, the, 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 the first proposal came from my colleagues. that They suggest me to, uh, to be more focused on CTOs and complex PCI. Um, um honestly, I was happy to do that. Uh, when they proposed me, um, I, I felt it like natural to, to go in the complex PCI field and in the CTO field. And, and now looking back, I think it was uh, the right decision. And then, uh, so actually, to take it back one step further, you are originally from uh, Italy, right? So how did you end up in, uh, in the Netherlands in the first place? Yeah, so I was uh, very early in my career. I was doing my specialization in cardiology. Uh, but at the end of the specialization, I knew already that I wanted to do uh, 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 the interventional uh, career. So um, uh, I always wanted to do to do good in life, and um, and in my career, I, w- I had I had a great drive in uh, trying to to achieve something, but also trying to to test a bit myself. So to put myself uh, in a, in a, in a challenge and and to see what 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 I was able to do. Um, so during my last year of specialization, I, I sent a, a mail to uh, Patrick Serais that was here in Erasmus. And, and basically I was asking to have a meeting and, and to have the possibility to start a fellowship. Uh, so actually he replied immediately and he said, yes, you can come. We have a meeting, we can discuss. And uh, when I came here, I, I arrived in his office and I put my CV on his table. And it took like two, three minutes for him. He looked at my CV and then very seriously, he, he looked at me and he said, Roberto, you really have no CV, actually. And, uh, and <laughs> that was... <laughs> 
that was a bit uh, shocking or uh, I was a little embar- uh, embarrassing there. But um, then I said, yeah, I have no CV, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to make my CV. Um, so that's the reason why I'm here. And, and I immediately replied this to him. And he was a little bit also uh, uh, well, interested in my reply, direct reply. So he said, okay, if you want to make a CV, you have to come here and we will work hard. And that's what we did for the following two years. And uh, so that, that was the start of my, my journey here. So that was a... Uh an exciting start, I guess, right, right off the bat, but yes. uh, I guess motivating as well. And actually, so he was willing to give you the uh, opportunity, the which is uh, sometimes even more more important. But then, so you you went there again, did all the research, did all the clinical work. Um, how do you actually learn to do the CTO work and the complex interventions? So I must say, I never had um, a. Uh, close to me a person that was already an expert in CTOs. So what I did is uh, getting a lot of information for from congresses, from colleagues, um, and uh, learning everything in theory first. And then I tried myself. So uh, I start trying and trying to be very safe at the beginning. And this is something that is still in my style. So I, I'm, I'm trying to have safety first in, in, my, in my work. And this was paying off because sometimes when you start the CTO program, if you are alone, you get maybe big, complication, uh, big complications. And this can be a drawback in your program, especially if you are alone doing that. Because you are seeing like the... Uh, crazy doctor who is doing very complex stuff, uh, very dangerous. We don't, and people doesn't want to get involved in that. So the I did the opposite. I started very safe. I I tried to involve uh, as as many people as possible in the program. So nurses, technicians, letting them them learn even the techniques, uh, even the theory behind the the intervention. And then I started with a buddy, with a colleague that was also passionate about CTOs. And we started together doing CTOs and we still do together. Every CTO uh, we do together. I think it's very important to have a person who is working with you uh, during your journey in the the CTO program because you are sharing... um, yeah, the burden of the complex uh, PCI. And when you do the PCI, you have somebody close to you who can talk to you. This is very important because uh, sometimes when you are doing the complex PCI, or the, the, the CTO, uh, you focus on what you think is the best strategy. And having somebody who is just close to you that can tell you, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can change strategy in this direction and do this strategy. This is very important because sometimes I must say we get a little bit focused on our idea and having somebody who is changing totally the scenario in, in our brain is very important and can be very helpful. And also, I personally have very good time with him when we have the, the CTO. We make jokes, we discuss, we we look together at the angel, and two brains are better than one. So um, not doing everything alone, that was very important to me in starting my CTO program. As you mentioned, having someone who can help you um, was very, very useful. But uh, um, does that also help with anxiety? Are you feeling stressed during those some of those very complex procedures? Are you feeling relaxed? How how do you actually feel when you do these cases? Uh, usually, I'm looking forward to have those cases. I love doing those cases. And uh, I'm sorry, but I don't feel uh, anxiety during the case. It's really a relaxed moment for the entire team. I see that also the the rest of the team has great participation. Uh, of course, it's complex, so you are concentrated, but it's not really anxiety. It's, it's uh, sometimes even enjoying the work that you are doing, especially when you achieve a, a good success in the procedure. Um, I really cannot say that I feel 
anxiety. Um, I love I love doing that. But this doesn't mean that we don't take it seriously. We prepare up front uh, quite a lot the case. So we spend a lot of time looking at the angel, trying to understand what is the best approach. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when you have a, an angel from a referring hospital and you do the angel yourself, you see new things that you you were missing at the previous angel. And then you discuss again. Then you take maybe five minutes discussing what's the best strategy and then you do it. But it's, it's, it's a process that I honestly enjoy a lot because I really feel that we have we give a contribution to to the procedure. You have to put your brain in action to find the right strategy, the right thing to do. Um, it's really something that you contribute. The success uh, of the procedure is something that you achieve uh, with some also intellectual work. And this is the, the best part. So I don't feel anxiety. I, I really enjoy it. And I look, look forward for, to, uh, to have the next CTO procedure. Perfect. And then in terms of the tough cases or cases don't work out or have complications, how do you manage for that? Does it affect you? Do you have a specific way of dealing with these issues? Well, first, as I, as I told you, I try. we try to be uh, as safe as, as possible. And this is something that is an heritage from my beginning because uh, – I was starting from scratch. And so we tried to be as safe as possible. And still today, we try to be as safe as possible. But everybody has complications. And especially when you do complex procedure, you get complications. Um, you need to be prepared to damage control when you have complications. So you, even if you are as safe as possible, you need to be prepared when you get a complication to manage the complication. So... First, from the theory, and you know very well this because you work a lot on giving people the tools in terms of theory for the management of complications. So you need to know what to do if you have a complication and, and, and then apply what you know. Um, when you have complication, of course, you can get anxiety, what we were thinking, what we were saying just a moment ago. Um, and there, having also a colleague, a colleague close to you, that's that's also important, because it can help you in uh, having a management of the complication, technically, but also in terms of yeah, anxiety. So it's it's um, it's good to have a colleague there when you do these kind of things, even in case of uh, complication, because it's it can be a great help. Um, so, uh, complication management is, is an important part of our job and we need to be prepared for that. Wonderful. And then, obviously, like, uh, you know, uh, Thorax Center is one of the premier centers for training other fellows. So, you have a lot of people, I'm sure, who you are training in, you know, standard and complex PCI. Um, when you recruit fellows uh, for that for the training, uh, what are you looking for? What are the things that make you believe that this person is going to become a good operator in the complex territory? So uh, we have a clinical fellowship, uh, fellowship program uh, that is basically uh, done by a two-year uh, clinical fellowship uh, at the Thorax Center. And all the clinical fellow, they perform a large number of PCI, I must say, and only at the end of the fellowship, they um, start approaching CTOs. So the entire fellowship is basically focused on complex PCI more than CTOs. CTOs is part of complex PCI, but we feel it is just the last step. Um, so that's, that's what they, they do. And every fellow that comes here is uh, around three days per week in the cat lab. Uh, plus the on calls. So he's also doing on calls. I must say at the end of the two years, they have done a lot of PCIs and they can manage the majority of the complex, complex situation that you can have in the catalog. So it's really a tough uh, <laughs> fellowship, but you achieve a result at the end. And the result is that you, you can, you can work in the catalog. And you can manage the majority of the complex scenarios that you can have. That's what they achieve our fellows. 
To choose the fellow, we have actually also a process. Um, we discuss first all the candidates in our team, uh, the candidates that we think are more suitable, then we met, we met them in person uh, or online. Uh, also with the team, we discuss together, we go through uh, basically their CVs and the, the experience that they have, not only in the catalog, also scientifically, because every fellow that comes here has also a scientific uh, work, even if they are clinical fellow. Um, and then we choose the, the fellows. So the background, the CV is important. I must say uh, for me is also the how how much the, the fellow is passionate about what he's doing. If I realize that the fellow is really passionate, is really uh, willing to to embark in a tough fellowship, but uh, really wants to learn to do this job, uh, this is a big plus for me. So the drive and the 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 willingness of the fellow to work hard and to achieve something is is a serious plus for me perfect and then what do you find is the hardest thing to teach them are there some technical things way of thinking w what is the toughest thing to teach them ah uh, that's a good question the toughest thing um there are things that you cannot teach, uh, so you cannot give them the um, the love for this work if they don't have it. So that, that is something that they, they must have uh, themselves. This is quite difficult, but it's really uh, beautiful when you see this drive in those fellows and, and, and then you can work on that. You can work on that, you can you can teach every day something and you see the pleasure in them and in you in seeing them growing. Uh, I was just today talking about one fellow that we had in the past and now he's doing very good in his own center. And this is giving me really a great pleasure. Um, when I see that one of our fellow is uh, succeeding in life, in his work, is I feel that is a little bit a success also for me and for us, for our group, um, because we we are trying to to give them something, not only on a professional way, not only on a technical way in the cat lab, but I think a real mentor should give you something also in the way you approach um, your work um, and and the various challenging that you can have in the cat lab. Perfect. But absolutely. And you say it, it goes, you spend so many hours in the cath lab, they spend so many hours in you with them. So it's almost like a family in the end because you interact so much. Right. But as you mentioned, it's not only the clinical work, which is exceptional, but also you have one of the strongest um, research um, uh, work uh, places uh, again in the Europe and the world. And you've been very productive. You have all these late breaking trials and all these high profile publications. So how are you able to balance the demands of the clinical work with the CTO complex interventions with the demands of running a busy and a highly productive research program? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm really able to, <laughs> to completely manage that. It's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work. Um, I must say that we have a dedicated time to do to do research, and this is very important. So the uh, planning and the having a program uh, in your research is very important to coordinate the clinical work, which is quite heavy, with also your scientific work. So uh, what I found really important in being able to have a good output in terms of uh, research is that you have to plan your scientific activity and have a real program for your scientific uh, activity. And these programs sometimes are years long. long. Uh, the, for the IVUS chip that we are doing now, we I, I remember I started preparing the, the trial two years before the trial started. 
Um, and we are still working on it and we think it, it will go on for another two years. So it's a very long journey and you really need to plan your time uh, if you want to be effective also in research. So to me, the key is the good planning, uh, but also the collaboration. Also in this case, having people that are collaborating with you, having a good team, um, a, a, a coordinated team is, is fundamental. You don't do all these things alone. You always work in a team and you need to have a very good team to have high level research. So it's not only about me, it's about our team that is doing this. Absolutely. And actually, I remember I did a summer course with uh, biostatistics and Erasmus has a phenomenal uh, program, which uh, you know, I know you work very closely with. So as you said, it's important to be in a place where this is the way of life rather than something that you do on the side of uh, other things. So that's that's very important. Are the fellows getting all an assigned uh, pro uh, project? They decide what they need to do. How does that uh, how does it work for them? Absolutely. They, they need to have uh, um, also a, a scientific program. So we have a research, fellowship, research fellowship. They are doing basically two years, more or less, uh, of research, only research, and they basically usually end up in a PhD. So they, they publish, uh, they, they have a focus, they have a subject that are, that are investigating. They have to produce several papers and at least four, five, six as first author. Um, in their book, I like to have only papers where they are first or second author to just show that they are really working on, on those, uh, papers. Um, and then they reach the PhD in, in a couple of years, in a couple of years. So that's that, that the program for people who is doing the uh, research fellowship. But also people that is doing the clinical fellowship, they always have aside a topic. And this topic is bringing them to produce some uh, papers. Of course, if they work in the cat lab, they have less time uh, compared with the research fellowship and they produce less paper. That is obvious, but they still have a topic and they still uh, are producing uh, some research. And even for this, planning uh, is very important also for them. But everybody has a topic from the beginning. And even before coming here, it's already created a program for the fellow. It will follow a certain path uh, to reach his goal of scientific production. Perfect. So it's all about planning, both on the clinical side and on the research side, to get things done, as you, um, you know, very, very clearly say. Now, coming to a different uh, point. So to do all these things, how do you, how do you keep in good, in good shape to be able to handle the cases, the research, the teaching, everything that comes along with that? Um, I think. Uh... It's probably my family. I don't know. <laughs> I have a good family. When I go home and um, um, yeah, it's my, it's I'm feeling safe. I'm feeling happy. So this is uh, this is helping a lot. So in my case, it's not it's not for everybody has to be like this. But I can say for me, uh, my family was very important and is very important. So. I met my wife when I was 17, so wow. <laughs> I, <never said. laughs> I hope she's not back. watching this, uh, this uh, <laughs> podcast, but um, so, and I think was, she was very important for all the steps of my life and she, she is, still is. Um, so I think in my specific case, uh, my family uh, was very important. Was very important also to be stable, uh, in <laughs> even emotionally. Um, it's not that every every time is going perfectly, but of course, uh, in 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 my case, that was very important. Uh, my family, yes. How how many children do you have? I have only one, and uh, and I think that's enough. That's <laughs> enough. <laughs> I think that's enough. For do, do they get uh, do they get upset if you go home late after long cases, or they're they're used to it? 
Uh, they don't get upset. They they like more when I'm uh, when I'm there early, but this is not happening very often. But uh, at least my son uh, is very happy when I can spend some time with him. So when I'm not on call on Sunday or Saturday, and I can be with him, he is extremely happy. And if if I really can do it, I, I, I do it. I, I spend a lot of time with him. When, whenever I can, um, we go playing soccer or <laughs> other things. So I love to spend them time with him. Wonderful. And then do you have any favorite uh, books or any favorite movies? Oh, uh, any favorite books? Medical books? Uh, any, any kind. Any kind. Mm, well, I have. I, I like a lot uh, for non-medical books. I like a lot of literature. Uh, I'm Italian, so I like a lot of Italian literature. And even sometimes I'm uh, reading uh, uh, Latin literature. This is very strange, but I do. Um, for medical books, um, I, I read, of course, a lot of medical books. But I remember with great pleasure. Uh, the first medical book that I had, I still remember, was a, a book of histology. And I was so happy to start in medicine. And when I saw that book, uh, for me, it was, um, was really a great pleasure. I was so happy to have that book. I read that book much more in advance compared with what I had to do for the medical school. So when I went to the exam, I knew that book by heart, but just because I was so happy to start in medicine and that was my first uh, book in medicine. So I still remember with pleasure. So when you decide to, to, to do medicine, was it from early in your life or did you have any parents, physicians or? I have no 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 parents as a physician. Uh, I I decide quite early. I decide quite early. Yeah, I think uh, I think I was a kid when I decided, <laughs> and uh, I went straight for medicine. For a little while, I was thinking to do to do something else. Um, I was in doubt. And there, my wife and I already was with my wife. She told me, "I think you are." you will be better doing uh, medicine and and I agree. So I already knew myself that that was my my path. So uh, I did it. So what are the things that excite you the most right now, both professionally and, and personally? Well, the things that are exciting me uh, are changing over time. Uh, I must say, when I started in the thorax center, I was extremely excited to be in the thorax center and to start working here with a great group, with great research. Um, now, over time, what is exciting for me is giving my contribution. Uh, I must say, maybe a, a bit mature, a bit, bit more mature. So um, uh, I like to give my contribution to my group, to my team, and also to the to the community. Uh, so doing studies, doing uh, trial is not only for our ego; is actually also to to push the field forward. So we are giving a contribution uh, to our field. And finally, I feel like I'm giving my pro contribution every day when you do procedure, not only complex procedure, not only CTO, but even when when I when we have a, uh, an acute patient coming in the cat lab, uh, uh, hemodynamically unstable, uh, you do your PCI, that might be also an easy PCI, a normal STEMI, and the patient goes out of the cat lab that is <laughs> flourishing back, that is, that is, that is uh, uh, much better than what it was just few minutes before uh, it's also a contribution so it's it's also something rewarding for me so uh, yeah that, that is the thing that uh, are exciting me and of course the novelty when you can do something new when you can uh, try something new in your field that's so the evolution of your field that that's of course exciting which of the studies you're currently doing are you most uh, excited about my next one <laughs> the next 
<laughs> none of the one that I'm doing, the next one. Uh, well, I must say, my study in general, I I, I feel them like like yeah uh, sons or or, or daughters. Uh, because you invest a lot of time, a lot of care. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love them all. Um, uh, the, the last one that I did, the BioVasc, I really loved it. I must say, I really loved it. Although it was not in complex PCI, but um, when we had a, 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 a experimental strategy that was doing immediately all the lesion of the patient in multivessel disease. And some of the patients, they were uh, saying uh, that they really would like to have the experimental strategy because they were feeling much more uh, friendly to them, the experimental strategy. So in the end, this experimental strategy might have some more space in the clinical field and and I mean, also giving to the patient something that they immediately feel could be better for them is also is also exciting. Is also uh, rewarding. So I love that that study. Uh, the other one that I really love is the IOS chip that we are uh, we just finished the enrollment, and this trial is um, is, is is trying to understand if really using uh, imaging in complex PCI. Uh, could add some um, some benefit, and we think we already has we have many signals that that is the direction. So let's see if it is true, and this will be the first trial in Europe. So all the other trial on this topic are done in the in uh, in Asia. So it will be the first European trial. Let's see if we are doing good in Europe. No, again, congratulations. I mean, these are amazing trials. You know, BioVasc, the chip IVUS, I mean, and, and these are all going to make a big impact on daily practice. So it's been uh, of uh, phenomenal productivity during over there. So congratulations on that. Which is the study that you are uh, that you are planning right now? Well, uh, now we are planning to uh, do some more in the complex field and also in the multivessel uh, disease field. So um, let's see. There is something also that we are investigating in with a drug coded balloon. This might be also interesting. So we have many many different uh, projects in uh, in. In coronaries, especially in complex coronary, multivessel, uh, drug coded balloon. Let's see. Let's see what uh, comes out. Perfect. Well, we're very excited to sit down the down the years. Yes. Now, how many hours do you sleep every day? Uh, I must say, I try to have a good sleep. Um, I, I think it's important. So, <laughs> I, I try to have a good sleep. Eight hours. Um, if it's possible, I try to have a good sleep of eight hours. Um, otherwise, my day might be not not that perfect. So I try to do my best. Perfect. And then, what would you say you are most proud of, uh, both personally and professionally, so far? Uh, professionally. Um, the, what I'm most proud, um, well, maybe um, my um, in the, in the profession, my willing to take the challenge. So from the very beginning, when I decide to send the mail to Patrick Serois, uh, up to now, uh, is 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 the is the willing to to accept the challenge and to face the challenge. Uh, I learned in life that the that the problems, challenging uh, challenges, uh, issues are part of life, and uh, we need to face them. Um, so, how I face them up to now, uh, it is something that I'm proud of, and and it's something that I'm trying to do in the future. So every time I have. A, I have some challenges, uh, I try to remind myself how I should um, uh, face them. And I must say, I learned this from other people. Uh, so it's not coming from only from myself. So 
I, I learned from other people uh, that um, we need to face challenge to be able to face uh, challenging and how we face them is basically um, what uh, qualifies us. Um, so how I did so far is something I'm proud of. I hope to be able to do it in the future. Perfect. And then about the new generation, the new fellows coming or early career people, what do you think are the key advice you would give them to become successful on the clinical and if they want on the research world as well? Uh, first, to do what they are passionate for. So uh, you have to follow your passion. If you like something, you have to do what you like. Uh, also, because if you don't like it, you have to do it for 30 years and it's not really the best, I would say. Um, so first, follow your passion and then uh, work hard to achieve what you want. Um, nothing is coming just uh, because we want it. We need to work to achieve uh, great results. They are not for free. So uh, follow your passion and work hard to reach uh, your your goals. Uh, and if you fail, uh, I must say that's that's not important. Uh, I, I failed many times doing CTOs uh, or in other, in other <laughs> cases, um, but uh, it's how we try to achieve uh, our goals that uh, that is important so uh, if you fail uh, try again and go on never get depressed um, that's that's the advice that I can I can give to the young generation so follow your heart and be persistent essentially just keep at it and eventually you will find the breakthrough eventually <laughs> perfect and then for for the future, do you always plan to keep on doing complex interventions? Are you thinking ever that you may want to retire or take it easy or this doesn't cross your mind? Uh, up to now, not really, but uh, because I really like it. So when I'm doing it, I really like it uh, and I want to do it also again in future. Uh, but of course, this might change. I think the time to stop is when you do not enjoy anymore what you are doing. If you don't enjoy what you are doing, then then it's probably time to stop. Uh, at the time that is, now is not really the time for me because I really love it. So, but I don't know in future that that may come. And one thing uh, that I really don't want is that I go on forever, uh, not being able to say stop at a certain point. I want to say stop at a certain point. And uh, I want to do it when I'm still very good, or at least quite good in doing what I'm doing. And then you need to leave space for the young generation. I don't want to to be as I mean as uh, some other person who are going on and on and on um, with a never never being really able to say stop. I want to say stop at a certain point when it will when the time will come. and leave <laughs> space for the new generation at that time. Wonderful. Well, again, Roberto, that was uh, phenomenal. It was uh, excellent learning about your your course and how you'll be able to, again, combine with a few people who combines the complex PCI and the CTO PCI with the research and with phenomenal results on both sides. So thank you again so much. Congratulations for everything. And I'm sure we'll be working together for a long time to come. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Sensei Podcast. 